today we're diving into top pet peeves of sewing machine technicians. Buckle up, this is going to be fun. Hi, I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and we do free video tutorials on sewing machines, sergers, and embroidery machines. But I've always been lucky enough to work both with the consumers in the retail store, but also being the middle person between them and the sewing machine technicians. Many of you know I used to be a Bernina educator for many years and I met tons of sewing machine technicians around the country who I'm still friends with. So when I had this idea of a video of putting together those top pet peeves that many of them have, I sent out some texts, some emails, and I so quickly got responses. And because these are like the quick pet peeves that many of them have. You'll hear some things that are very similar, but things that a lot of us might not think about on a regular basis. So I have gone in and printed off all the things to talk about, and we're just gonna pull them out in random order, and we're gonna read through them, kind of talk about them a little bit, and I think it'll be kind of fun. This first one's actually from me, and it says, don't ask to talk to a technician. You know, a lot of the salespeople, people working in the store, actually know a lot of information, and they are there to help you with your questions. Now, usually when I say this, it's because number one, they have an entire sewing machine pulled apart, parts put in different areas, screws ready to go all back into the places they came out of, and of course, you don't want your sewing machine technician to be interrupted if this was your machine. You want all those screws and parts to be put back exactly where they came from. So interrupting them to ask a question means that they're stopping working on somebody else's machine, and who knows where they might forget to kind of put everything back. Now, eventually they're gonna to get to the end, realize they have two screws left, and are gonna to have to start all over. Now, that would be a pet peeve for me, is realizing that I had forgot something because somebody interrupted me. All right, that's this number one. Okay, number two, where are we? Oh, this one comes from Adam. He's one of our service technicians here at our store. Adam is six foot six, he's a big boy. And his first thing out of his mouth was when Customers bring their sewing machines in, in the cabinet. Now think about older cabinets and they've somehow, instead of just taking the sewing machine out of the cabinet, they have brought the entire setup. Now I can just imagine him kind of straddling this machine and trying to work on it. And actually, you know what he does is he takes out the two screws. You know, when you tilt it back, there's two screws, you pull it out, you service it, and then you put it back in. So that was actually his first thing out of his mouth. I bet it's because he had to work on one just recently. You don't have to take the cabinet in. It's very easy to take your machine out of it when you are uh, taking it in for service. This is actually from somebody who has since retired, but one of his things that he says is, when you say that I just worked on it, but it was actually six months ago. Now, six months is a lot of sewing machines. I think we're all to that point where we don't always remember, you know, was that like last month or was that like three months ago or six months ago? So those are things that can kind of bother a sewing machine technician. Just keep that in mind when you're doing that. Are you liking this cute little Valentine's box? This is embroidered project from Oklahoma Embroidery. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out how you can make this on your embroidery machine. They do the cute little where they button all the pieces together and it's working out perfectly for today's video. All right, this next one comes from Joel. He says what bothers him is when customers are calling for a save day service, a lot of stores offer that, and they say it's just for a cleaning. But when they show up, the machine is actually having like five different issues that they need addressed. So sometimes with a same day appointment, those extra issues, when they're not actually explained, can actually take a lot longer. So sometimes some of those machines need more hours of attention. And that's always hard when, you know, they wanna get that machine back to you in a timely manner, and you don't realize how long it actually takes to kind of fix some of those extra issues. And I think you're gonna see some other common things like this coming up from some of our other technicians. Okay, well, this one's a much bigger one. 
Uh, this one comes from Jill. Jill works with us. Uh, she is one of our four full-time technicians we have at our store, which I'm just gonna throw out. Like, don't assume that all sewing machine technicians are men. There's often female technicians, so it's just safe not to ever assume that the gentleman working at the store is the technician. And never second guess, the gal that's working at the store, she could be your technician. Jill says, when people say they have trouble with, say, an embroidery arm or a foot cushion, control or a power cord and then they don't bring that item in with their sewing machine to have serviced. So if you need us to look at something, bring it all in. And you know, sometimes having a sample of what the problem is um, along with your machine helps them out tremendously. She also mentioned, and this was interesting, is when you bring in a machine and you just take the cord, still stuck into the side of the machine, and you wrap it around the machine. So that cord gets bent and those pins start to bend in there. So it's always best to unplug it, bring your cord in, bring your foot control in, but like um, you can put a rubber band around it, but just don't wrap it around the sewing machine and bend it at that point. Um, puts a lot of stress on that cord. And then she also mentioned that for the USB stick. So take out any USB sticks that you have in the side of the machine before you transport them, because they can often get bumped and um, can actually break that connection. So that's a big thing for her. Uh, once again, she says, you don't wait till your car breaks down to bring it in, but a lot of people bring their sewing machine in only when it breaks down. So keeping up with regular service, help the machine out, and your service techs be a lot less stressed when they sit down to do your service. I just kind of threw this one in. It's, it's the quote of the day. I bought a really expensive machine from Walmart. Um, I'll just let you think about that one. Our next technician says, I would say my biggest pet peeve is getting random text messages with no identification from people acting like they know me. So if you do happen to have your sewing machine technician's cell phone numbers, I would use that very, very sparingly. Again, they're working on other machines, they're busy helping customers. So just make sure that you don't take advantage of having a direct line to your sewing machine technician. All right, I have a few more in here that are actually really funny, but I wanna just let you know with all of our free video tutorials and our online classes can help you master your machines and a lot of times learn tips and tricks along the way to help keep your machine in top running condition. You know, our two most popular classes, actually three, I'm going to just mention, and I'll put links below. We always have free video lessons that you can watch in these courses to see if the course is right for you. If you're an embroiderer or maybe you're not an expert embroiderer, our Embroidery Essentials online course is the most popular one that we have. Our second one is our Stitching Cosmos online course. This is actually all so so everyone with a sewing machine can take this course, learning lots of the features and functions in your machine and how to just make it blossom so you're not just sewing straight all the time. And for those of you with Husqvarna Viking and Foff machines that are Wi-Fi compatible, our boot camp classes are ideal for you. Sometimes again, knowledge is key for learning so much more about your machine and using it in other ways. And I say that taking the time to master your machine can help you a lot in the longevity of using the machine that you own. This next one is from Brandon, also one of our own sewing machine technicians. And he kind of scratches his head and he says, spending big money on machines, but little money on the maintenance. And he, he recently just had a machine in with over 20 million stitches and it was only the second time that it had been serviced. And he, he actually explained a few things. It was actually a Bernina and Bernina is just like any sewing machine needs a lot of fine tuning inside on an annual basis. And not just to keep it running smooth, certain areas need just a little bit of grease and not something that you and I do, but it needs to be placed in certain areas so that as things get used, it stays nicely lubricated. And here's some pictures of what dried out areas of the hook driver look like. He actually gave me these two pieces and, and I know you can't really see them up close, but one of them is just like barely, I mean, it kind of, it turns, but it has kind of a click, click, click to it. And it just, it's not smooth. And that's what happens when machines are used for so long without attention 
that now there's a problem. And once there's a problem, then other things start to happen. But if you have it serviced on a regular basis, they kind of can keep everything running smoothly and you never run into these major issues. So, ah, this one just spins so much nicer. This is actually where it magnetizes on and then you put your bobbin case in. And so that is doing all the work. So yes, those things are so, so key. And there's so many parts and places on these machines that need attention where I know you and I just kind of focus on the bobbin area. Some of you put oil in it, some of you don't uh, because of the type of machine it is. But cleaning out all that lint and dust is so, so key for what you and I do every say a couple bobbins worth of sewing. Our next one comes from Bill. Bill talks about the thread quality and the age of the thread that sometimes comes in on customers' machines and then they can't understand why the machine is not sewing well. So that is probably one of the biggest things. In his opinion, like Coates and Clark is not the greatest thread, imagine that, and doesn't really provide good quality stitches. When you have a high performance sewing machine, you need to feed the machine with high performance performance thread. So if you're getting cheaper thread or you think you got a great bargain, well, did you? That can make such a difference on these high-end machines. Take the time to use good quality thread and it will last you so much longer as well. Uh, his second thing is needle plates. Um, so when customers try to push and pull on the fabric because the machine won't feed it, and they flex the needle and then it strikes the needle plate. Well, once you have a good strike on the needle plate or a, it's a burr and that causes some other poor quality stitching because the thread kind of catches that as you go in and out. So those are things this to be aware of that if you find yourself having some consistent problems, just have it serviced. Let them know that it's kind of catching on that something and they'll know to look in that hook area or on the throat plate to see what they can do to get you back running smooth like when it was brand new. Troy says his pet peeve is when customers demand I drop stuff and service their machines without an appointment. Okay, so yes, I know everybody needs their sewing machine back, but you do have to realize that there's probably 30 to 100 other machines in for service as well. And you just have to plan ahead a little bit. I know, I know, maybe it's time for a second machine, then it won't be such a worry. Okay, Joe is a wonderful service tech and he lives in Chicago, so you gotta do this in the Chicago accent here. Yeah, don't come in and say, it's doing the same thing as last time. And for him, that was probably like 120 machines ago that he serviced, because he is a top service guy. And so that is his instant pet peeve. He's like, I don't remember what your machine was or what it was doing. So give me, give him a little hint before you just say, that. just don't say that. Just just tell them what the problem is this time and, um, and it'll be okay. All right, Emily, see, more service ladies. Uh, Emily says, mixing up terms presser foot and foot control when describing problems. So I know sometimes that can be hard, but just kind of keep that in mind is sometimes when we use not the right terminology, ah, it's a little harder for them to kind of know what you're trying to describe is the problem. So uh, I know there's a lot of feet on machines and foot controls and such. Um, let's try to keep those a little straight for them. Okay, all right, next is Norm says, his pet peeve is refixing machines that have been serviced in other places and weren't serviced correctly. Maybe make sure that you are confident in where you're taking your machine in for service. Maybe check on reviews or get some recommendations from some of your local friends. All right, and I did save this one for last because this is actually my brother-in-law and I knew he would say this, but Ryan says his pet peeve is glitter. <laughs> It's going to happen. We're going to be sewing on something with glitter on it and it's going to get in the machine and it will stay there until it gets serviced. It's really hard to get glitter out of things. You've probably noticed. And um, he just kind of has to shake his head. He knows he has to clean it and it's really hard to get glitter out of sewing machines. <laughs> but guess what? I know that's what they're there for. It's just one of the things. He opens it up and there is the sparkle. Now, how can we make things better for our sewing machine technicians? Hopefully you've got a couple chuckles out of here and things that we can maybe do to just realize that all they're trying to do is get these sewing machines fixed and back to you in a timely manner. Um, make sure you are patient with them. I do know that summer is a great time to have your machine serviced, maybe when you're out of town and you're not in a rush. Um, a lot of times they're not as busy in the summertime as they are in the fall. Um, I also put a note here to um, 
bring them cookies. They love treats. I mean, who wouldn't want a few extra treats? I'm not saying that's gonna like bump you up in the line, but they're gonna remember it. They always love to have a little extra goodies to help them keep working through the day. So if these have been funny for you, maybe you have your own comments, maybe you're a service technician and wanna add your own comments to below this YouTube video, we would love it. We also know that only one in 10 of you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. So make sure each time you watch a video that you go ahead and click the like button, that's the thumbs up. And then also leave us a comment, that's always great. And don't forget to subscribe. I hope I can do more videos for you in the future with some of these fun things. And again, I would love to see you in one of our online courses in the future. Again, there's some links below for you to go check out. And to all the soy machine technicians out there, oh, thank you for keeping us in top running condition.